UGC is a community if you think of it that way, because you're going to have that collection of people that are those raving advocates for you, probably talking about you more than just posting about you. You're listening to Retail Remix, your inside access to candid conversations with the people shaping retail's future. Here's your host, Alicia Esposito. When I think about what makes social media so meaningful and so powerful for brands, it's that you're essentially getting insight and content for your brand from the people who love your brands. It almost creates an ongoing cycle of collaboration and creation, and these creations can be used by your brand to drive further engagement and, of course, tangible results for your business. This is the power of UGC or user-generated content in motion. And with social commerce accelerating and evolving as rapidly as it is now, I thought now would be a good time to get an expert on the line to chat about new trends, new ways to use UGC, and ways to combat some challenges or concerns around this space. So today I'm sitting down with Christina Kay, VP of Marketing for Reseller Ratings, and Believe me when I tell you, her day-to-day is all about UGC. So we have the perfect person on the pod today to offer you some insights and best practices. Christina, it's so great to have you on the show. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much. I am so excited for this. I know, me too. We have a lot of fun topics to get into today, but let's start with a little bit about you. Tell us about reseller ratings and your role as VP of marketing, what it entails. Yes. So as you said, I'm Christina Kay, VP of marketing at reseller ratings. And what I do at reseller ratings, we are a 10 year old startup. So I have so many different hats on. And I really work with our executive team, so our CRO and CEO, on scaling and building the business, as well as just listening to our customers and maybe adapting product based on that. And then obviously that go-to-market marketing plan that we do throughout the year. And at Reseller Ratings, we amplify the voice of millions of shoppers And with that, we help brands collect, analyze, and syndicate their customer reviews and UGC across various shopping channels. And what I love about our product and like what we do and we're passionate about is helping our customers really grow and help create loyal and repeat customers for them. Yeah, and we'll definitely get into that ripple effect of value for UGC. But before we do, I do want to clarify, I mean, what types of brands and retailers typically work with reseller ratings? Like, are you seeing it change? Because, you know, obviously, we've seen the rise of e-commerce, the accelerated use of social media, like, is the customer base diversifying at all? So we've always had a very diverse gamut of customers. We have a really, I guess you can say it spans from different like eyewear to athletic wear to car dealerships, medical devices, like lingerie to face products that we have like so many. It's not like one specific area of retail, but we have seen it definitely increase throughout the pandemic just because people are shopping online more and having that trusted factor with online shopping because they couldn't shop on, I mean, shop in store during the pandemic because things were closed. So brands really had to step up their game, if you will, (laughs) in the side of like trust and loyalty, but then also just the experience for the shopper because they wanted to bring that in-person type of vibe, but really online. Yeah, for sure. Because I know a lot of the challenges that consumers face with not going to stores is kind of missing that face-to-face or like that one-to-one interaction. So, I mean, even though like social media allows that to scale and you can reach so many different types of people all over the world. It's like, it's difficult to kind of get that level of detail, I think, versus say going to a store and being with a friend or even just asking an associate. So I could definitely imagine that acceleration definitely took place. So with that, I would love to kind of get into some of the key applications that you're seeing today for UGC, because like when I think of user generated content, I feel like there are so many different 
ways to define or categorize that. So, I mean, like, what are you seeing in this space right now? For us, we see a lot of our customers using their own customers' content um, for their UGC, which is what UGC is. But from that in general, I'm seeing a lot of new like tech or e-com coming up because of that. And things, for instance, like there's one, we talked a little bit about the in-store experience, but being digital, there's apps like Hero that ha- you have an basically an in-store experience, but on your phone, you have a shopper showing you different shirts and things like that, that is really getting those people shopping more online, but in a sense in store because you're doing it on FaceTime or something like that, that Hero uses. And also with key applications, I feel it's coming up very rapidly. I feel there's apps like, or companies like Statusphere who work with brands to really create and help their UGC needs because it can become a beast, if you will, because with UGC, it's different than that influencer marketing because UGC, you have less, well, you don't have rules, you know, with influencer marketing, you have to do certain things, you know, so it's kind of scary in a sense because someone could post anything about your brand and using those different tools are just really having a get your ego out of the way mentality because some of the times that UGC could be in a not the best light per se or like a negative thing, but that could help you bring back to your team about, hey, we need to focus on this and do things like that. So I feel those listening tools also is a really huge thing in the UGC space because you do have to focus on the people who are those everyday people, but who love your brand, or maybe they have some opinions on your brand, but listening to that is crucial. Yeah, for sure. Like when you look at ratings and reviews, especially like I know one thing that we've been covering increasingly on retail touch points is like the challenges surrounding returns and fit specifically. So it's been interesting to see how certain brands and retailers incorporate like fit tools, like not necessarily like super granular, like AI, like body scanning stuff, but it's more like a sliding scale and like based on feedback this fits true to size, or maybe it runs a little small, like mining all of that data is so meaningful for the customer. But like, to your point, like other areas of the business, like product development. Yep, exactly. And also with the ratings and review side of it, like that's just a piece of UGC, you know, like, because using those ratings and reviews for your paid ads and using those like throughout maybe your like organic social or on your website, you have like a widget of just customers who love us and things like that. But those scales, like even for me, like I am a shopper, like I shop online a lot. I, those scales are things that I definitely look at because I'm shorter. So I have to see if I should go up a size or down a size or I'm normal, my normal size, because those really do help you. And then being able to filter by body types or different, maybe like weight and height is really helpful because then you can see people who look like you in those clothes to then help figure out if you want to buy them or not. And then those different users, if you can see their other reviews that can help them with their journey or like the other shopper in their journey to buy other clothes that someone who looks like them looks great in that they're like, hey, I want that top two. It's super important to have that because otherwise, like you're talking about with returns, some people like for me, I hate returning things online. Like it's such a pain, you know, like even going to the post office, like there's so many things and some brands do it incredible. And then some, it's kind of like jumping through hoops that you're like, you know what, it's not worth it. And so that's the whole experience with UGC, I feel, is from shopping or the discovery phase to purchasing. And then even at that checkout, there's still points there that you can really captivate in their journey with you. And then the post email and checkout and when they get the product, there's so many things that could happen that you really do have to listen to and be aware of to help your UGC efforts be that full journey and not just like, oh, post the checkout and having the t-shirt, there's really points at every step of their journey. 
Yeah, for sure. And I think one of the powerful things about UGC, and you kind of alluded to this in your response, is that it can support different stages of the decision making process, whether you're just discovering or learning about a brand, you know, maybe through social advertising, or you're comparing direct products or different products from that specific brand, or maybe you're comparing like similar products from different brands, right? Like there are so many different ways to use UGC to support that customer journey. So to the end, I want to get into some use cases, because I know one thing that I've been hearing from a lot of creators, you know, brand creatives, marketers right now, it's like, okay, this UGC content, whether it's imagery or ratings and reviews or just general feedback, is that this is from our customer, right? This is meaningful. This is authentic. And consumers will trust this versus like us talking about how great we are. So, I mean, what are you seeing in terms of like effective ways for reusing that UGC to get that maximum value? Like, are you seeing it being more spent on like organic channels, branded content, or is it getting into like paid channels as well? So I definitely think it's paid and like organic. But the thing, and you touched on this a little bit with your response and question, is that UGC really does make people trust your brand more because you can say, and you can have the best looking models in your product and on your site, but the customers that are wearing your product are going to speak volumes and it's going to be more trustworthy, especially if you use like a diverse or you have like a diverse customer base, it's going to help tremendously. But then also it's going to be more memorable because if someone sees a a shopper online like a, or a view online on your site and it's just very organic, like in front of their mirror, like a selfie or something like that, and they're paired with maybe a, some shoes and a top and a hat or something, they're going to think of that outfit in their mind more than what the model's wearing just because they can relate to it. And that's the reason why they purchased. So they could go back and figure out on your site something to build that outfit based on the review. And that person reviewing could be just reviewing a pair of pants, but just how they put it together is that very memorable piece. And with UGC being utilized or repurposed, we see it so much in ads, especially if it's like the image, maybe having it like transparent a bit with the actual rating review on top of that image. And it could be a paid Instagram ad, or it could be Facebook, um, or even now with videos, because I feel like videos are the next huge thing. I feel like it's huge now, but it's only going to get bigger. And using those videos on TikTok, especially because TikTok is obviously video and it's known to really convert people easily and having UGC, having those loyal fans or those fans are new fans that are going to be coming loyal based on that UGC that they create can be repurposed in really anything. It could be also repurposed in email marketing if you have some coupon codes to send out or things like that. Having people or utilizing people's actual photos on those different types of content, it means more to people because then they're like, oh, wow, they feel special. And that's super important because that's going to be a word of mouth thing. You're going to like send it to your friend. You're going to screenshot it. You might tag that brand on Instagram with your story. And then that's just like showing just that loyal base as well, the loyalty base, as well as just the authenticity of the product of the company, but then also that person who is showcasing your brand. Yeah. I mean, my response to that is probably going to show what I typically look at on social media, but I feel like makeup brands do such a great job with that. Even like going back to TikTok is a really great example. I mean, that specific category really thrives in video because it's not just seeing how the product looks in context. It's also like, how does it glide on? How do you apply it? What are the before and afters? Like there are so many rich use cases within that category. But like, I've also seen more like five ways to style this pair of pants or like five ways to like wear a sundress. Like there are so many different ways to show products 
in context and like that value can amplify across so many different channels. I mean, like I've even seen some brands spotlight photos of their customers, like in newsletters or like email updates. If a product sells out, it's like your peers or like our shoppers are loving this item, get it before it's gone. So I guess to that end, I mean, obviously I'm a bit biased based on my shopping behaviors, like more apparel and cosmetics, but are you seeing like the value of reusing and repurposing this content really go across categories or are there some that maybe don't want to or shouldn't show that level of depth in their user-generated content? I guess I'm trying to figure out how, how diverse these use cases are and like how many different brands can apply it. Yeah, I mean, I could be wrong, but I feel like really all industries really like B2C, B2B could utilize UGC. Obviously, there's going to be some that have a little less use cases like a hospital or something like that. But when it comes to even like if you think of car dealerships, like you think of UGC with that and you're like, what is that? Or maybe like a car detailing place like that could be huge for UGC because that Like now with the weather is getting better, people are going to be probably detailing their car more and having those cool videos would be awesome for me. Also probably motivate me to like clean my car, honestly, you know, or get it detailed. And I feel the industries that we know that use it the most, obviously, like you said, those makeup brands or skincare and apparel, um, hair things like that, like that's very common and known. But we have a client that with Zenny Optical, their UGC um, strategy is pretty amazing. And just to see it working for them and just showcasing their customers is great. Like the use case or the story I have for that is kind of funny, but like it just warms my heart. But my mom started shopping for new glasses and she went on Zenny's. And at the time, she did not know that they were one of our clients. And she she kept sending me like selfies of the ones that she was virtually trying on and things like that. that. (laughs) Right. And she's like in her late 60s. So if you think like because some people say it's, oh, it's just for like millennials or it's just for like Gen Z, things like that. But it really is for every age. And I think it's so cool when brands can captivate that because when you do that, you truly have found what you're supposed to be doing. Because if you can help people who maybe aren't that typical target audience, you can create a brand that can take off even more and utilizing those types of photos but even so like with this like the selfies my mom was taking and just showing the tech that can be easily used to try on glasses or try on a shirt or things like that when you bring in AI for that because people are saving those photos or taking screenshots of them and they could maybe send them to their friends and say like hey vote on which one I should buy like that's UGC and that's maybe they haven't bought the product yet that's like pre-purchase. And then I also have seen it in like different filters, like brands having those filters that you can try on glasses, for instance, or try on different makeup. Like that is essentially UGC if someone posts that because someone's like, oh, wow, that color is pretty. I'm going to go buy it. And then that UGC digital transfers to in-store. And that is so cool and powerful. And I feel that is going to be taken off even more, especially in the video space, because Video, in my mind, is like king. People used to say content is king like back in the day. And now video is just a thing that is going to take off even more. And I truly think it's because of the pandemic. People are more comfortable on camera because of Zoom. They've had to be for work. So now they're more comfortable just sharing different things about their life or the things that they're purchasing. And that's going to help brands, especially with those micro influencers or things like that, or people who just have like two followers, but they're posting on their products that they love to eat or the products that they love to try on, things like that. It's just going to take off in my opinion. And I'm really excited to see it all work. Yeah, definitely some great points. And it kind of leads me to a follow-up question. Like I love that you kind of brought up the long tail impact of UGC. And we've been talking about off and on how UGC can impact the entire customer journey. So I guess my follow-up question for you there is, does UGC or can UGC have an impact on local or in-person retail? So for instance, like 
can a brand leverage UGC to drive in-store traffic? Like when I was thinking about this off the top of my head, I was like, oh, well, I guess you can try and mine UGC around like specific in-store services or like specific associates to kind of validate the value of that particular location. But is this something that you're seeing like brands trying to use UGC as a vehicle for driving that foot traffic? I definitely am seeing this, especially with those bigger brands that you can, especially like makeup, if you think about that, like Maybelline. You can't really buy Maybelline online, really. You could if it's like Ulta or something like that. But it's brands like that or other brands that are piecing together their digital experiences, especially if it's like a Snapchat filter or an Instagram filter, things like that is going to help drive that traffic into the store, especially if you pair that with a coupon code or if you like do some type of campaign in the sense of video yourself in the store trying on doing like a fashion show per se, and then you would post it online. And then from there, they might like email you a coupon code to then shop online as well. There's like two ways. I mean, it could pair either going from digital in-store or in-store to digital, just because if someone is a true believer of your brand and that loyal person, like you were kind of talking about associates, like maybe there's associate that they love working with within the store, like the brick and mortar store, they'll go in there, but they'll probably also shop online. But having that way to connect the two and maybe give that associate like a shout out on social, maybe there's like a code that they give them so then that associate gets credit. There's just so many different things that you can do with that and pair it to in-store retail or in-person retail as well as online because there's some people who don't want to shop online, who still love like going to the mall and getting their coffee and shopping. Like I definitely still have that in me to do, but a big part of what I do online is shopping and going in-store, you have to have that draw, especially within that digital space and captivating their audience digitally to then push them in store is definitely a thing that it's happening and they do it to me personally and having me actually get dressed to go to a store is big, you know? So I feel like that's super important for brands to think about and doing like that cross transfer of both. Yeah. That area of this space in particular is one I'm going to keep a close eye on because I feel like there's so much room for creativity and so many different ways to like, like who knows, like maybe even the associates are the ones that are creating the content, right? Because those are still users. Those are still brand fans. And I think, you know, we're hearing more about your associates are the closest connecting point to the customer. It's a way to connect your brand to the community. So why not find different ways to uh, show them off, especially if you get into that video content, right? Like showing off new products, new releases, and giving a sneak peek of events even. Like I feel like there's so much opportunity there. You know, to the end, I feel like a lot of our conversation, Christina, has been around the value of UGC, different use cases, value drivers. Um, So I guess my question for you is, is this all these value drivers, like something that all brand leaders are privy to, like they know and understand it. And the question is more like, how do we get started versus should we? Or do you find that there are some brand leaders and marketers that are questioning the validity of UGC for their specific brand? Because I feel like for a while there, it was like, no, you should do this. And some brands were still hesitant. Like, have you seen this change over the past year? I have, but I also still am seeing that hesitation a bit from some brands, um, especially if it's like a older target market for that brand. But I also talk to people on this and I talk to my team about this a lot too, is even if that person or like that prospective customer comes at with a like rebuttal per se of saying like, oh, their target market's not online. But if you think about it, like I have my mom for the example of that one for Zenny's and taking the selfies with virtual trying on. But a lot of the times the older generations, they are knowing digital now because of their grandchildren or things like that. So I feel that 
people need to be educated more on it. So that, that's what I'm really trying to do in the sense of not just talking about reseller ratings and like what we do, but in the sense of that education and awareness of UGC and how it can really help your brand. And it's more of a community effort because UGC is a community, if you think of it that way, because you're going to have that collection of people that are those raving advocates for you probably talking about you more than just posting about you. So some people definitely have that hesitation. And I think also the hesitation comes from the ratings and reviews side because they could say, oh, like these aren't authentic reviews or these aren't verified, things like that. They could say, oh, people were paid to do these. And it's just really clarifying what ratings and reviews are and how they can be verified and how they come about, but then also that UGC side in the sense of showing that trustworthy, authentic part of the brand will help people realize that it is needed because I thought about it in the sense of, and I actually talked about this at the B2B MX recently, that if you have a small team, like say you have a new product or you're, you have an Etsy product that you're trying to like get a bigger site for and things like that, if you have four people, say, working on your brand, but you have 300 customers, that's 300 other people that can talk positively about you. So yes, every brand, any size could utilize UGC because it's going to just help cast out your brand. And then those 300 people probably have friends and then it just keeps expanding and expanding. So UGC is needed at all levels. And it's just, obviously, it's a baby steps. It's a thing that you can work on and really see what works for you. But just getting started with ratings and reviews or something like that is definitely a way to start. And then from there, really seeing what people are talking about within your ratings and reviews and like what they're posting and then using those assets to boost it with ads. If you don't have ad spend, just then reuse it organically and just get the ball rolling that way because I feel every brand, any size, really any industry could definitely utilize it. And I know I mentioned like hospital or medical offices before, but if you think about like an orthodontist and like show someone's journey through their braces, like that's user generated content that could be the patient doing that. And maybe they get like a free whitening for helping out or something like that. But I feel like every industry could really benefit from it because it's going to just show that trust and just brand love and positivity that every brand wants. And if someone who doesn't work for that brand shows that, it's just going to be a ripple effect. And I feel that it could help really any brand that targets any age throughout their UGC journey. 100% agree. So I'm glad you brought up concerns around, oh, are these reviews legit? Or is it just a bot? Or are people buying these reviews? Because I know that's something that I've seen come up a few times in certain channels. But the other concern, you know, I've heard from the brand perspective is, oh, this is user-generated content and social media can be a bit of a wild, wild west. So moderation and brand consistency become a concern. So what do you say in response to that? Like, do you have any moderation best practices or ideas? Because like, I know, obviously, in addition to like crude and hateful content and like all of that stuff that is likely to occur, it's also like, oh, this content doesn't mesh with our aesthetic. And is this the level of quality? So I mean, how do you navigate those conversations? And what are your thoughts on I guess, how flexible brands can be or should be when it comes to user-generated content. Yeah. So I feel that like you are very, I mean, brands are correct in the sense of UGC can be like a loose cannon per se. Um, And you really don't know what you're going to get or what people are going to post. And that obviously is really with anything with a brand. But I feel that When it comes to utilizing UGC for your own efforts, like I know our software, you can really filter and flag things really easily based on what exactly you want to see as like a photo or a video to then be able to reutilize on other assets. And I feel that, yes, it's good to have your brand like integrity and brand aesthetic to be in line because I'm very, I'm a marketer. So 
I totally align with that completely just based on UX or UI of a site or an Instagram feed, anything like that. But I feel if they spun it maybe as a like on their website as like customers love us. Like I know it's weird to have that on the B2C side because B2Bs usually have like those testimonial pages, but having one that you really curate to pick those select people who are showing your brand in the aesthetic or light that you're showing your brand yourself. Because in my opinion, here's the thing. If someone loves your brand and is creating UGC for it, they probably are in line with how your Instagram feed is. They're probably in line with how your website is because otherwise they wouldn't keep coming back. So they're going to really view your brand as that, not lighthouse, but the shining light of how they want their own brand, like their personal brand or their personal Instagram feed to look like. So they're going to try to not idolize, but in a sense, just like copy that to really fit into a brand because What person doesn't love if you love a pair of shoes, like if you love Nikes and if Nike likes your photo or repurposes your photo, that feels good. So someone's going to tailor their creation of their content to be in line with your brand because otherwise they wouldn't keep coming back. There has to be a reason that it sparks to them and it really like resonates in their soul because there's a lot of options for shopping and there's a lot of things you can do and there's a lot of things they can do besides post for your brand or post about your brand. And they're going to try their best to make it look great, obviously. But also I feel you can repurpose it in different ways if it doesn't completely align with your brand. You can maybe utilize it in a maybe Tuesdays or you pick a day that you just have like you share posts from your UGC or your rating reviews to see how those interact or how people share those as well. And then from there, you can kind of take a look at your brand and say, hey, these are the people that are actually buying the brand. Maybe our aesthetic is different and wrong because if you have your buyers that are doing certain things and you're thinking the buyers are doing something else, that UGC content can maybe help shape a different vertical for you or a different way to approach or sorry, different way to post about your brand. I feel it's really pivotal for brands to maybe get out of their own box some way because it opens it up to other buyers and other people to be loyal to your brand. Yeah, definitely some fantastic points. And I feel like this is a topic we can chat about for hours because there are so many different layers to it and so many different use cases. But it is at the top of our time together. And to close things out, I would love your thoughts and predictions of like where you anticipate this space to go. I do want to circle back to the point that you made earlier around video and how that is such a powerful channel seeing the rise of TikTok and the fact that so many other platforms are trying to build out their video capabilities in order to capture some of that market share, especially among younger consumers. Like they are using this as a creative vehicle and some of these capabilities are so strong and so so valuable, I think, for creators as well as for brands. So, I mean, how do you think this space will evolve? I mean, we went from seeing like only certain types of brands being on social media to like luxury brands embracing it to influencers to UGC, like it's rapidly evolving. So how do you think UGC will evolve over the next year? And what do brand and marketing leaders need to know to set their strategy up for success over this time? I mean, it could be implement XYZ, or it could just be, you know, remain flexible and don't be afraid to test things. But I would love for you to kind of share your thoughts there. Yeah. So like I've said, I feel like I've said this 5,000 times on this, but video is going to be bigger. You can see that in the sense of people are getting really good at creating amazing videos within TikTok because of transitions and then the apps that come with that. And I'm not talking like professional grade videos. I'm talking just everyday people creating these videos about really anything, but brand specific. It's just going to get bigger and it's going to get it's going to get more intuitive. There's going to be apps that are going to be coming up that it's going to be very easy for people to create these masterful creations because that's what's needed. And that is what is like, that's the way of the world right now. Because if you can't create a 
wonderful video creation on your phone, it probably won't land well, one, because just the sizing, be able to like size it for different social platforms, like making sure you do that. And creators and like UGC people are creating that because now you can easily save things for different um, platforms. So being cognizant of that, because I feel that video and people learning about how to do video on things like TikTok are going to create these UGC amazing, beautiful projects or campaigns just for everyday people that are going to be talking about your brand. So video is king and it's going to keep getting more intuitive, especially with AI. And I also feel that brands do need, if they have never done UGC or have never done ratings and reviews, it's that like crawl, walk, run kind of method with it. Because if you do it all at once, it'll be one overwhelming too. It probably won't go well. You just really want to start somewhere and then keep going and growing because you really don't know what people are going to say about your brand. You don't know how people are repurposing the content that they're creating. So just listening to that and really honing in onto that audience is super imperative for any brand to grow. But then also be able to get out of your own comfort zone. And I said that a little bit ago because I've seen brands transform to different populations, I guess you could say, of people because they've used to really target one area. But now it's really about that like body positivity and things like that. So brands just have to be open for change and really take a look at what their current audience is doing what their current audience is interacting with with your content because that's going to speak volumes rather than your head of marketing or your team like your brand team saying this is what we're going to do because I think this looks good or something but you really do need to really listen to your buyers or even have like a focus group from people that are rate or reviewing your products because they're going to tell you more and they're going to feel more involved and they're going to feel lucky to be part of that conversation and they'll probably spend more. So really like wrap all of that up with UGC, I feel video is going to be getting bigger, really listening to your audience, but also create a community that they feel special and that they are going to keep coming back to you because you're also telling them like, oh, your content is great and resharing it because in this day and age, people do like that satisfaction of likes or shares and things like that. And if your brand is capable of doing that, definitely do it. But if you're small and just getting started, start with just like ratings and reviews, listening to those things, and then building your brand from there. Awesome, Christina. So many great insights and takeaways for our listeners. Thank you again so much for taking the time out to chat with me about this fascinating area of the social media and e-commerce world. If people want to connect with you, learn more about your work, um, where can they go? Yeah, so um, you can go on LinkedIn. It's Christina K. And then on Twitter, it's also Christina K. So it's very easy to remember and find me. So yeah, just link up with me and I'd love to chat. If you guys have questions about any of that, I talk UGC all day. If you need tips on where to buy some cute shoes, you can always hit me up for that as well. So just let me know. Love it. Or a little bit of both. (laughs) Exactly. All of the above. (laughs) Awesome. Christina, thank you again so much for taking the time out. And to the folks listening, thank you for joining us. Like Christina said, if you have any follow-up questions for her, definitely encourage you to connect with her. She's always sharing such great content across social. And if you like what you heard, drop us a rating and review, no pun intended. (laughs) Um, We would love to hear what you think. And of course, spread the word to your followers if you found this conversation valuable. We are on all podcast providers, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, frankly, anywhere else, and subscribe so you can get some new conversations like this one directly to your preferred device. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of Retail Remix. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find us on your favorite podcast player. Until next time, keep mixing it up.